Hello, it's Mark O'Mara here, and I'm going to try and use Excel to solve this problem here. I'm going to try and work out what the possible outcomes are for tossing a coin, rolling a four-sided die, and then a six-sided die. What I'm going to end up with is either heads and a number or tails and a number. And I could just do a tree for this, but it's going to end up quite big. And I'm going to see if I can automate part of it using Excel. So, first thing is, I'm going to grab a whole lot of heads. Because, you know, because that's one of the options. And I'm going to grab 24 of them. So just for starters. So I've got, I, I, first up, I toss heads, and then I get one. And then I could get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. So hopefully you can see what's going on here. What this is, is the times that I'm rolling, I'm tossing a, I'm tossing a heads, I'm rolling a one and I'm rolling a one. And so this is adding up to equals, and I'm just calculating uh, these two here. So heads plus, heads plus that, so in that case it'll be two. So I'm gonna drop that formula down, and I'm actually gonna drop it all the way down, and that's fine. So next up, I know that this is possible for every single time that I roll, whatever I roll first. These are my possibilities for second. So, then I put in my result from my four-sided die. So, and I'll explain what I'm doing. Um, I just, you know, there's only so many things I can do at once, and some of you will have noticed that I've made a mistake here, incidentally. So, this block here is where I rolled a head, then I rolled a one, and then I rolled either a one, two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. And there my, and column D is my result. And I've got the same thing repeated for, for rolling a two on the four sided die and so on and so forth. So I've got my outcomes there. Now, what I'm actually gonna do is I now know that there are 48 different ways that this can turn out. Because I've got the 24 of them here and I've got another 24 identically, but I just rolled a tails. I just flipped a tails the first time. So what I really want to know is how often these numbers here occur with the heads to see what out of 48 times that means. So here goes. I'm going to use a function in Excel where I'm going to say my possible answers are, and I'm just eyeballing them, it can't add up to 1 because 1 and 1 on the dice is 2. So 2 is a result, 3 is obviously a result, 4 all the way down to 10. So, 8, 9, 10. And what I want to know is the frequency, how often each one of these things occurred. And by the way, I did have to Google a video for how to do this. I didn't just know this. So, that cell is going to equal a thing called count, count if, there it is. Count if, brackets, count if, and then it asks me to select the range. So I grab all that data there, pop in a comma, and then it says criteria. That means I'm counting them if they equal what? Well, count them if they equal two. There we go. So that's done. So one time it equaled two, and I'm going to drag that formula down, and one time it equaled 10. So that tells me how often those numbers occurred, and that's good for me to know. But what I want to know is then how many times is that going to occur out of all of the possibilities? So how often am I going to get a score of two? You know, roll a heads and get the dice adding up to two, which is going to be a, a heads and a one and a one. And the answer is going to be one out of 48. And that's easy enough. But when it gets up to the others, that's where it gets a bit more complicated. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build myself another little formula. This is going to equal, so one divided by, actually, your times, see I typed the wrong thing there, 1 in 48 times 100, and that's going to give me my percent. And just for the sake of simplicity, I am going to look at my formatting, and I'm going to turn that into two decimal places so it's a bit easier to work with. So I'm just waiting for that to load. 
uh, two decimal places, beautiful, and OK. So I'm going to get heads to 2.08% of the time. I'm also going to get tails to 2.08% of the time. The most likely one is either heads, oh there it is, those three there. Heads 5, 6 or 7 are going to come up 8.33% of the time and tails. So what I can do is I can grab all of this, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to go back to you know a document that I've got and let's just say, actually what I might do is just grab all of that, copy it, go over here to a document, I'll just get myself a new one here, let's give us a tick, computer's running a little bit slowly, and then I can just quickly format this. So I can say, heads, heads two, heads three, and so forth, and those are my percentages there, and I could repeat it again for tails, and I would have my probabilities worked out for all of those things. So, I'm sorry if that was a little bit hard to follow, but you know, we were getting off into the weeds a bit there, and I hope that's useful.